Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have a third video for you. This is late night edition Prime, although maybe you're watching this in the morning or the next day. Uh, we need to make a video because Nintendo has released their actual um, briefing they did with investors. We obviously went over the financial results uh, earlier, but now we know some additional information. Nintendo does actually make their first legitimate mention of a next generation platform. So that is something that we need to talk about and why they mentioned it. Uh, we also need to talk about the audience for Nintendo Switch. I've been telling you guys for a long time that Nintendo Switch is not really primarily made for kids in fact a majority of the audience is adults am i right or am i just some crazy mid-30s nobody that you shouldn't listen to i mean maybe you shouldn't listen to me anyways i don't know but uh we'll find out here because now we have updated figures on the average age groups that are playing nintendo switch Beyond all that, we get, to, we get an update on how many people are subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, so yeah, we got three really interesting things to talk about here. Before we do, I will remind you, we do have a giveaway going on right now for Prime Tober. It's a Switch OLED bundle, so yes, it'll be a Switch OLED. There'll be other items in there as well. We'll announce those items as the weeks go on. To enter, all you gotta do is be subscribed. Oh, and by the way, the winner gets to choose a charity of their choice after we vet that charity uh to donate a hundred dollars to like they don't do it we donate a hundred dollars to that charity so yeah pretty pretty cool there oh by the way smash that like button everybody can we get this video to i don't know 500 likes i think we can do 500 let, 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 let's keep it realistic 500 likes i don't know what happens if, if we get there but i appreciate it All right, so first up we have the uh, this graph. Woohoo! Look at this graph. All right, so this graph came from their briefing, and this talks about the current state of Nintendo Switch and the age distribution of annual users. You will notice around the age groups of 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, right in there, there is a little bit of a bump. But uh, look at the average age group around 22, 21, 22. Uh, yeah, that is the biggest, largest group of people playing Nintendo Switch are in their college years. But if you really look at this and you go back to, say, you know, 19, 18, 19, that's also a larger group than any other child group in, in the United States. You're legally an adult at 18. So it certainly looks like to me 70 to 80 percent of Nintendo Switch players are adults at least according to the letter of the law anyways uh you'll see that i mean even that 10 year old uh age group or i guess i guess probably the 11 year old age group that's the biggest for children um i mean that doesn't get matched by adults until around age 45 44 so the peak child group is matched by the 45 year old everything from 18 to 45 is a larger audience than any child group so yeah i think it's pretty safe to say the nintendo switch audience is primarily played by adults uh so take that for what you will uh nintendo did mention this to be the case back in 2018 but it hasn't been updated since and it's interesting that shintaro furukawa chose to talk about the audience now they they point out that it, this shows a diverse audience which it does by the way 18 to what is it all the way up to 60 for the adults is like that's a really wide range uh but even when you look at the children you know it really starts to take off around you know age eight or nine in the child sector so falls off a little bit in the teenage years you guys know teenagers we gotta play the hardcore games right we gotta call of duty on or whatever the case might be but once they get out of those years and get more i guess mature they seem to be a lot more interested in nintendo platforms so yeah uh this to me you know despite nintendo talking about how the this shows a wide range of diversity it also shows that yeah most people that play switch are adults so i don't know what we're gonna do about the fact that nintendo's reputation is that they make games for kids i i know it's mostly based on the art direction of their games but most of the people playing those games are adults so is art direction really an indicator of anything I don't know. I feel like it's time to put that one to bed. Let's get to the next point that we learned here, and that is how many people are subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, I found this to be really interesting because obviously uh, I've been really chastising Nintendo Switch Online as a service, but it's a service that isn't going to go anywhere anytime soon. Sorry, there's a, this is a really long document here. 
Um, most of this stuff is just stuff that we already know about and isn't really that interesting. But I do find the total number of people subscribed interesting. So it is 32 million people to date are subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online. Now this doesn't necessarily include people that are also subscribed to the expansion pack, but the base Nintendo Switch Online service is at 32 million and continues to grow as the Switch does. Now that makes up roughly a third of the audience that plays Nintendo Switch. And uh, that, that, that to me is rather, rather interesting. Uh, when we just consider, um, you know, Nintendo's first ever subscription service being Nintendo Switch Online. So um, I think that's interesting. Obviously, uh, they talk at length about the benefits of the service and all that. Um, pretty much stuff that I've been blasting over the years. But uh, still, it is growing and it isn't going to go anywhere. And I do have some good news, potential good news here about the Nintendo Switch um, games. When you talk about the NES, the SNES, N64 Genesis and the general services of Nintendo Switch Online. There might be some good news for the future. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment because Nintendo had a graph. They threw this graph up about the future outlook. Um, and you'll see, obviously, they talk about the integrated hardware software of Nintendo DS and Wii. Conveniently, they're just skipping the Wii U and the 3DS. I'm not really surprised the Wii U and 3DS happen to not be that well integrated. And on top of that are the worst selling platforms in their respective space. 3DS is Nintendo's worst handheld of all time sales wise. We use the worst console of all time sales wise, obviously Virtual Boy. People can make arguments for that, but um, yeah. Here's what I find interesting about this graph. First off, it mentions a next gaming system. So whatever Nintendo has coming next, their next generation system, Nintendo's working on it. It's on the graph. If it's on the graph, it's in the works. Not that we should be shocked that it is in the works, but it is. And it's going to come out before 2100 <laughs> because it goes you know, 2000 and XX. So like, obviously, you know, it's going to come out before I die. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool to, um, you know, speculate on what that is. Nintendo doesn't talk a lot about it, but what I find really interesting here is that they have the Nintendo account system going from the Switch to the next gen platform and the value added services of that account system. So this would be like the expansion pack and all that expanding as we get to the next platform. This to me is really interesting because Nintendo doesn't go into too many details on it. When I actually read their presentation, um, it says like we seek a virtuous cycle with our integrated hardware software business and the provisions and services of content based on Nintendo accounts in which the touch points are created with ever more consumers and strengthened with established long-term mutually positive relationships. And then they just go into basically how people can be happy with these services. But what they don't really note, and I feel like this graph really illustrates, is that Nintendo's planning to bring the Nintendo account and all the services forward to the next system. This suggests that we're not going to see what happen what we've seen in the past. In the past, with things like Virtual Console, it's been reset on every system it's come out on. That appears to not be the case here. It feels like everything that they have now will still be relevant and there on the next platform. That is very, very good and does make make it people probably feel more comfortable with long-term investments in Nintendo Switch Online and obviously the expansion pass and whatever else comes next because you know these services are still going to be around on the next platform. Now, obviously, we hope these services get better and we hope that Nintendo improves on things, but it does appear that like, hey, we're not going to get like a reset on these services heading to the next system. They're going to be there day one and they should just continue to expand. So we'll have to wait and see, but I'm pretty, pretty stoked to find out what is next. Uh, so yeah, folks, um, thank you so much for tuning in. That's the video. Uh, I needed to get this out to you guys because I feel like this is really interesting and important information about the current state and future state of Nintendo Switch and Nintendo platforms. Um, yeah, you guys are amazing as <laughs> always i hope to catch you guys tomorrow night we'll be doing a live stream it will be another video at least tomorrow as well but i hope to catch you guys at our next live stream it should be a good time a nice little friday capper tomorrow so you guys are awesome stay smiling tell someone that you love them and have a great day